I'm Guillaume from Arrange. Uh, I'm leading uh, uh, a technical uh, open source project. So the aim is to, to, to publish it uh, in a very widely manner uh, in open source, but we will detail just after. And I let the floor also to Matthew, yes. also from Orange. Mathieu, Mathieu Rouen, I'm working at Orange and uh, I'm the product owner on Telco Cloud project and I used to be uh, an OpenStack uh, developer and now the focus is on uh, Kubernetes and cloud native applications. Okay. So uh, the topic today is uh, really to, we already discussed this morning with Swisscom, Dutch Telecom, that uh, we definitely need to, to change uh, our, our scope. Uh, so uh, we will introduce uh, this open source project uh, that it's a building block really to, to, to change the, uh, the network operator model. Uh, and then we're going to go uh, a little bit deeper on, on the functional scope. Uh, and then Matthew will manage some uh, demo, uh, demo session to, to demonstrate where we are for the moment in this uh, transformation journey. Okay. So um, the first point is we already shared, but it's really important that uh, it's time for action now on the on the uh, telco operator model. Uh, we definitely need to go out this system where the, the VNF is linked to, to, to the infrastructure, so it's really important. The second topic is that uh, there were some crucial security incidents uh, last year, and uh, the things are going worse and worse uh, for the operator. There are more and more uh, the target are on some uh, cyber security. And uh, here I'm, I'm just referring about uh, a report of the GSMA uh, for this year. Uh, and last point is that uh, operators are quite convinced of the benefits of a cloud native. And uh, the good thing is also that some uh, network functions, sorry, some network functions um, are now also uh, integrating uh, the cloud native design and are required some uh, efficient CAS uh, to power uh, this network function. Uh, the last things, and he, here is also an echo of, uh, of Michal's uh, presentation from DT this morning, we need to have continuous change. Maybe small change, yeah, but we definitely need to have uh, on a flow of changes on our infrastructure and on our operator. And it's very important to maintain innovation, but also for security perspective. So this is the situation today. Uh, our proposal uh, is to build a Teco Cloud stack, and we want also to, 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 to publish in an open source way we identify the different pillars. The first pillars, we, we had a, a tremendous uh, talk before uh, concerning performance. Yes, performance is really important in the cloud native environment with uh, different type of uh, uh, optimization mechanism, uh, DPDK, BPF, and, and so on. We also need uh, low latency when we want to tackle some use cases like uh, open run. Uh, and uh, performance also, uh, it has been mentioned before, um, to have the best performance, we need cast on bare metal to avoid uh, hypervisor uh, layer. Um, something new also in the telco cloud infrastructure is that really we need distributed cloud. Um, and to manage this distributed cloud, we have two different layers. The first layer is the bar metal automation, or I can manage thousands of nodes uh, with uh, open operating system uh, lifecycle management, for example, and, uh, but also to onboard declarative and GitOps approach to, to manage such infrastructure. This is very important point. Another point uh, is also to manage a lot and thousands of uh, Kubernetes clusters. So it's really key to, to have a, a proper lifecycle management 
uh, around these uh, uh, thousands of Kubernetes cluster. I mentioned that security is a must have, and here we want really to, to consider that security is an added value of this project. It's not uh, something that is going to slow down us. Um, so we'll integrate uh, this as a, a core element of, of this project and based also with uh, some, uh, some EU, uh, um, some EU uh, incomes uh, about what can be uh, uh, the security design uh, on, um, on such infrastructure. Uh, we, we, we have another topic concerning energy. It's not to, to have greenwashing uh, on, of the project, but really that uh, we have plenty in, um, in the coming semester to integrate some research activity uh, that has been identified with some laboratory to integrate uh, this dimension. And it's, and it's really important when you are focused on use case uh, like uh, Open RAN. And, and last but not least, uh, open source and standardized API is really important when you want to build. It's not just because we are in a KubeCon event, uh, we mentioned this, but when you want to have a multi-vendor approach, it's really uh, an important topic. So this is our pillars uh, for project. So now we want to build this thing. So how we, how we are going to, to, to have it? So really, uh, as I mentioned, we, we, didn't not just, we did not just want to have uh, uh, another stack. We, our focus is to have a production grade release. So uh, it's important to, to, to work with Telco operators, we, we, are, we are many uh, telco operators that need this, this, uh, this asset. And uh, the, it's important also to onboard some VNF vendor to integrate their requirements as soon as possible in the product lifecycle management. So uh, as partners, uh, of course, uh, Orange that are here, but also Telecom Italia, uh, Dutch Telecom, uh, Telefonica, Vodafone, Nokia, and Ericsson. We, we are commonly working on this project. Uh, we are about uh, 30 uh, engineers that uh, have been already onboarded on this project, and you have some first assets, but we want also to accelerate, to recruit more from these members, but also to open this project more and to, uh, to have a key contributor to, to move the market. Here is the main goal, is that we, we think that alone it will be very complex. So we really want to, to have a, a, an alliance to, to move this market. So uh, that is important. We do not want to overlap existing uh, initiative. It's really important the assets and the outputs from Anuket concerning conformance tests, reference architecture. It's also important to work with the CNCF on the CNCF test suite, for example. Uh, we definitely, we have some members and some engineers that are fully involved also in the Open RAN Alliance, and the Workgroup 6 uh, concerning infrastructure is really key on, on this uh, initiative. And maybe in the future, we, we, we should work more closely with GAIA-X when we will have some, uh, some work and some, uh, some output from the infrastructure uh, stream of GAIA-X. OK, so what, what is the car? So uh, no surprise, uh, what it will be very important in this, uh, in this telco cloud infrastructure is to manage the multi-cluster uh, and to have a proper lifecycle management. Also, the Kubernetes distribution. I already mentioned the bar metal automation, but is really key. We want also to go in the network automation. We spoke with uh, different uh, engineers before uh, during lunchtime about the, the, the nightmare of, of managing lots of VLANs, so we really need to, to automate this part. And uh, hardware acceleration is a key topic. Uh, we've got also transversal uh, functional blocks uh, that, uh, that uh, Matthew will, will detail, and I'll let the floor to, to Matthew to, to go after. Okay. Thank you, Gil. Okay. 
Okay, let's discuss what we have today in the stack. Um, so, as uh, Swisscom and Dutch Telecom mentioned uh, earlier today, uh, the way we want to operate the stack is uh, with a, a GitOps way, a GitOps approach and processes. So, um, we are going to leverage uh, in this project, for the moment, we are going to leverage the fleet uh, project for managing thousands and uh, thousands of clusters along with a, a, a stack uh, coming from Rancher with a, a Rancher management suite and RKI uh, uh, based uh, clusters. Along with, the, with these clusters, we are putting uh, SAIOV and Multus uh, CNI plugins because uh, this is a strong requirements coming from vendors which are levering, leveraging these, these kind of technologies. We are seeing that, uh, especially for the RAN use case, uh, the bare metal management part is really important because uh, uh, for the moment uh, we are seeing that uh, RAN vendors are coming with, uh, with strong requirements about the, the OS and the, and the uh, materials running uh, uh, below the Kubernetes stack. So we need to find a way to uh, operate this stack as we do operate the CNF on top of it. So to manage this, we are going to, to uh, use a project such as uh, MetalCube along with uh, Ironic. And, uh, and a cluster API will, will probably be a key component to uh, manage the bare metal, uh, uh, the declarative way. Um, for the moment, the, we are deploying the, um, the, the stack not with cluster API yet. We are using Terraform. And we are also including some uh, key elements to manage uh, security as we want to work uh, on the security issues uh, as soon as possible uh, because we are going to have uh, some uh, security constraints because of regulation. So we are including uh, components such as uh, Vault and uh, Free IPA to manage uh, uh, connections and login to the stack. So not, nothing really new here, but it's um, an integration project based on, uh, on the existing, uh, existing uh, projects uh, that are used by, uh, by, uh, by uh, CNF vendors and integrators today. Yeah, and it's really important that uh, we are based on open source components. We will contribute also on this uh, open source component, and we will release, uh, we will release and publish this uh, integration uh, in an open source way. And it's very really important uh, to to do this, and for, for so that this telco cloud stack can host these different use cases that you can see on top. OpenRAN is an example. 5G core is an example, but we do not want to limit this CNF. We want also to address the CDN, the SD1. We want to build this horizontal stack. And in this continuum, we have in mind also to reach the edge computing in as the continuum of, for example, the mobile private network. So it's really a, a sovereign track we can have on this distributed cloud. And yeah. OK, what we already provided is the first demo uh, which has been presented at the Mobile World Congress in the Oran booth. Uh, this demo was demonstrating how we can uh, connect uh, labs from, uh, from uh, all the partners, all the te telco partners, Dutch Telecom, Telecom Italia, Telefonica, and Orange. On those labs, we were deploying uh, a management stack based on the Terraform script available to deploy the stack. The management stack were deployed uh, on, uh, the, in the Orange lab. Uh, in this stack, we were uh, having uh, some GitOps tool to deploy uh, Mavnir uh, DU and CU on remote clusters 
deployed also with Terraform script and attached to the Rancher central server. So um, uh, this way we demonstrated that we were able to uh, uh, operate the, the CU and DU, the ORAN components, uh, from a central point based on the uh, GitOps uh, way of, uh, of managing uh, remote CNF. This was a, a first uh, interesting approach. This is uh, typically where we, uh, we uh, adapted the stack to the Mavnir requirements in this context. And in this, um, concerning the, the stack we are building, so this is an integration project where, where the CI will be really important in order to have a, a production grade uh, stack. And we are going to rely on existing uh, testing frameworks, such as uh, Anuket RC2, uh, CNF conformance test suites, Sonoboy, and so on. This kind of test suite will be included in our CI. And uh, we will, depending on, on how it works, we will include them in the in the CI or not, but if not, we will have a, a deep understanding of the reason why it is uh, not working. Of course, we want to contribute back in this kind of uh, framework to, uh, to, uh, to provide some, uh, some telco-oriented uh, um, um, testing, uh, testing uh, uh, suits. And uh, the test result has already been, already been uh, run in, on the stack and are available uh, in, uh, in the annex. So today in the demo, what we are going to show is the deployment of uh, Nokia 5G core AMF. Um, it is a cloud native application developed by Nokia. And uh, we work together with the uh, Telecom Italia DevOps team and uh, Nokia DevOps team to, to be able to deploy it uh, with, uh, with Fleet, so with a GitOps approach. Uh, be able to scale the, the, the components uh, provided by the, the, the CNF, scale them up and down, and we will show this in a, in a, in a video. So let's play the video. We don't do it live because uh, uh, Daniel showed us that uh, with the Wi-Fi wi it's a bit difficult. So, uh, okay. So we have to. Okay. So, so this is a, a video that has been released by the Telecom Italia team with, uh, with, uh, with uh, the support of uh, the Nokia team. Here, first, we, we are showing you what we are going to. Uh, I forgot, sorry, I forgot the first slide to introduce the demo. Uh, let me get back to the, to the slide deck and show you what uh, the environment of the demo looks like. So, the environment is the, the, uh, how it looks at Telecom Italia. We have a, a lab where that is hosting a management stack available here uh, with a rancher in it. So, so this has been deployed based on uh, the Terraform scripts that uh, are worked on in the Telco Cloud project. So we are deploying the, the management stack and we are deploying uh, remote clusters uh, based on RKI. And um, along with that, we are deploying also a GitLab instance, which is hosting uh, the fleet YAML uh, descriptors and the CNF config files. 
We also are deploying Arbor, which is hosting Elm charts and, uh, and container images. And we are using Fleet, uh, which is provided uh, with Rancher, to uh, deploy uh, and manage uh, uh, the, uh, the life cycle of the CNF. So let's move back to the video. So first of all, what we deployed, uh, so this is a view of what is available in the GitLab, GitLab instance. What we deployed first is a, a descriptor that tells Fleet what to deploy and where. So in this context, we are saying to Fleet that we are going to deploy uh, the two, uh, the manifest uh, repository and the charts repository on the Telecom Italia cluster. Um, so, what do we have also uh, is, uh, okay, here it is. We also hosting uh, some, um, uh, some manifest that, have, that has to be deployed on the remote clusters in order to uh, to deploy, um, sorry, ah, it's a bit challenging to play a video live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so here we have some uh, manifest to uh, to create namespaces in the remote clusters and uh, provide some uh, secrets that are uh, needed by the CMM because we'll see that, that the CMM is uh, used is managing the deployment uh, of, uh, of uh, so the CMM is the AMF coming from uh, Nokia. Uh, it, is, um, it is managing the deployment of, uh, of uh, pods and images uh, on, it, uh, on its own. So we have a couple of uh, manifests that are going to get deployed on the remote clusters. And we have a Elm chart to deploy the, the, the AMF which is saying that the AMF uh, is going to deploy this Elm chart, uh, the fleet is going to deploy this Elm chart with this Elm val values uh, for the AMF to be uh, deployed on the remote clusters. So, so let's get back to this, um, this, um, the way it's going to work, we are going to, to tell Fleet what to deploy first, here, by applying uh, the YAML file on, on, on the management cluster. Here it is, so here we are seeing that in Fleet we have a new Git repo that has been created. It is applied and we see that uh, uh, bundles, which is a Fleet term, uh, are created. It is saying that uh, the components that we told Fleet to deploy are, uh, are, uh, are deployed in the remote clusters. So it takes a little bit of time because it first created, uh, when the first time uh, Fleet tried to deploy the, the CMM, it was not a uh, uh, possible to, to, to deploy the CMM because namespaces uh, were not available on the remote cluster. But since we are using a declarative approach, uh, the, uh, it is uh, being reconciled. So the, the, the M chart is being played uh, another time and then we have the CMM deployed. So we see here, and there's an interesting thing, sorry. We see that uh, the way Nokia is providing uh, the ZMF is based on an operator. So we have to deploy a CRD and, uh, and uh, some API uh, ma managed by, uh, by Nokia. This is the way the ZMF coming from Nokia is working today. 
Okay, then once the CMM operator has been deployed, it's go it is going to deploy uh, the AMF components and uh, a couple of other components uh, based on uh, the values provided in the Helm chart. So we are seeing them live. I'm moving on a little bit because it's quite long, but not as long as we could be in a virtualized or uh, hardware uh, uh, demo. Okay. Okay, it's going to be running. Now it's up and running. So now we see that the CMM has been deployed only by uh, creating uh, some uh, fleet components and uh, fleet, uh, fleet descriptors. So the bundles are live and up and running. So what we are going to do is uh, tell uh, is uh, about uh, saying that we want to scale uh, the AMF component to a minimum of three components. So what we do for that is uh, updating the YAML file by saying, and especially the Elm uh, values, and saying that we want three components, and then we we uh, apply this in Git. Fleet will take uh, this into consideration and reapply the, the M chart so that we are going to see that the, the AMF, a new component, is going to get deployed on the remote cluster. Here it is. So we have three AMMS components now. And the same way, so we see here how we can scale up with the GitOps approach. And we can revert by saying, no, we want to get back to two components, applying it with a Git apply. And it's going to get back to two AMMS components once Fleet will take it into account. So Fleet is really convenient here because um, we have uh, we are targeting uh, uh, we want to be able to to, to manage uh, thousands of clusters and the Fleet approach about how we are able to uh, to tag clusters and tell we want to apply this manifest this those those Elm charts on these tagged clusters. It is really uh, a nice way to, uh, to manage uh, uh, clusters at scale. We also have experience with, uh, with Argo CD, with Flux, and uh, uh, we are still open in uh, the GitOps tools that we are going to use for this project. But for the moment, Fleet is, uh, is matching the, the requirements that we have in, the, in this project. And the same way, we are able to, uh, to uh, destroy uh, the remote stack, the stack that has been deployed on the remote cluster, by uh, removing the, uh, the Git repo in Fleet. So it really shows how we could manage the, 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 this kind of CNF uh, with a GitOps approach. And this is what really want, what we want to, to leverage in this project. Yeah, thanks, Matthew. So uh, it was very important for us. Uh, we have a strong interlock with the uh, uh, presentation of this morning with Swisscom and, and also from, from DT to, uh, to uh, perceive uh, 
the transformation uh, of the operator on a cloud native operator. So it was the first part. And then uh, Matthew demonstrates uh, that uh, uh, in a couple of months, because we've started the technical stuff in December, so in six months we, we had the first demo uh, on the ORAN uh, uh, use cases. Here it's on 5G core. But we are not, we are on the middle of journey. We are, on, uh, as I mentioned, we want to target um, uh, a production grade uh, release. So, and uh, to, to be published also in open source. So we still need to uh, come back, maybe uh, next year, to, uh, to explain how this uh, project now um, uh, has managed the way to publish it in open source. We are seven members actually, several industrial members. So how uh, we can uh, integrate some new members and uh, we will demonstrate uh, that uh, we will move the ecosystem uh, to, to achieve this transformation. So thanks all, and thanks also for the members that are not all here, but uh, Telecom Italia has done a great job with Nokia. We've got Vodafone and with Tom, uh, Nathan uh, from Dutch Telecom, uh, also uh, Guillermo from Telefonica. Uh, we have uh, support also from, from Rancher here. So yeah, thanks all. Uh, Thank you all. Thanks. I'm not sure we can do Q&A or...